and you know, guys, you, you put on a, a fantastic conference. The uh, planning that's gone on here, the conversations, the roundtables, the openness to discussion and, and about solving real problems is, is phenomenal. Uh, so congratulations to everyone who has put this together. It's, it's a fantastic event. Um, now, with that, yeah, most of the conversation throughout the past couple days has been around um, mostly purchases, uh, mostly around merchant acquiring, some about money transfer. So I'm going to talk about something a little bit different today, and that is business payments, B2B payments, right? Which are a completely different animal than what we've been talking about for most of, of these past two days. So. You know, how do businesses pay each other, right? And why do they pay each other, right? It, there's business to business, e-commerce, sure. Uh, but for the most part, a business is buying a million widgets from another business or is paying back a service provider who provided software development services, who helped to build some uh, exhibit booths, right? And so they're getting an invoice and they are making a payment for a service already rendered. And it's a very different process. Things that happen in the, the commerce world don't happen in business to business. Because you first have to think about what is a business, right? It's not just you know, as simple as this picture, right? There's a store and a person and they send money to a store and a person. No, you know, businesses are collections of people and like most problems in the world, if you could just eliminate the people, you would eliminate the business problems as well, right? Because businesses have dynamics, they have internal politics, they have processes, they have communication, collaboration, that all needs to happen in order to achieve a goal. And so your business payment moved, you know, conceptually from this to something that's more akin to this. Right? You have invoicing, you have reconciliation, you have tax reporting, bookkeeping, right? you have approval processes. And so it is hard to get through a business payment, right? as we were talking about in the panel. Right? The, the payment part is, is actually the easiest part of the, payment, of the whole cycle. Right. I want to get into another very important thing that as you're thinking about business payments, we have to talk about two different concepts, which both in the, the industry go under the word payment, but I want you to start thinking in a different way. Start, because for a business, right, I walk into a store, I swipe my Visa card, I hand you a $20 bill, I hand you a paper check, right? all of those things, I walk out with my merchandise then. Did you receive your funds? Only in the case of cash. Everything else, there is a lag, and there is time that comes in, and that is settlement, right? And so when we're talking about things like faster payments and PSD2, what we're really talking about is a banker's problem of fund settlement. We are not talking about a business problem of payment, right? And so let's go and let's ask people, what, you know, do you want faster payments? And this is from the, the U.S., the Faster Payments Initiative, which is concluding 22 different initiatives. They're not going to endorse any of them. So this is an actual question that they put out in a survey. Right? When do you want to receive funds? Instantly? One hour? 12 hours? 24 hours? Three days? Right? Here's the results. 69% of consumers want to receive their funds either now or within an hour. 75% of businesses. Right? Is that surprising? It's surprising to me. So this, this is saying that 25% of businesses, 31% of consumers don't make the only rational choice. Right? Nobody is picking, hey, yes, I want my money now. Time value of money, business school 101. Right? I am losing value for every second that I don't have those funds. But, and yet, we have 25% of businesses, 30% of consumers saying, I don't care. That's stupid, right? Or is it? Because for businesses especially, surety is more important than speed. 
right? The certainty that I am going to get those funds is more important. I have net 30 day, net 60 day terms, net 90 day terms. I'm happy to give that to my customer as long as I'm sure that those funds are coming to me, right? And I can do factoring. I can do a whole bunch of things to manage my cash flow if I know that I'm gonna get paid for those million widgets, right? And that's why 86% of businesses care about the surety of the payment more than they care about, care about the speed of the payment. Now, further, right, if you go into a, especially a retail situation, right, and this is playing out in the US where we've recently adopted EMV payments, right, which take much longer to authorize than swipe payments. Right, so would you, as a business, as a merchant in a retail situation, do you want 30 second authorization that's gonna give me my fund settlement in three minutes, or do I want quick three second authorization and then I'll get my funds in three days and 30 days? I want my customers to be happy and quickly through the line so I can get the next customer through. As long as I am sure that the payment is gonna happen, I don't need it now. I need the fund settlement to happen. But what we were talking about there was all around the receiver side, right? What about payers, right? In a business-to-business -business situation, the payer is the one with the power, right? right. And in my own experience, uh, last company, we hired a, a software development firm in Costa Rica. And they said, you know, you can send us payment to this Costa Rica bank account. I said, well, I don't want to pay $30 to send you a wire transfer. Right. What did they do? They came back to me two days later, and they said, well, no problem. One of our board members ha is in Miami, so you can pay to his bank account, and he'll make sure that we get the money. Right. Suppliers will bend over backwards because I am giving you money, and you will find any way possible to take that money. Right. So attacking it from the other side is attacking the wrong part of the problem. Oh, we're a little bit short on time, so I'll quickly get through a few of these. So what we've developed, as the other needs that payers have is around what happens if something goes wrong, right? What happens if the million widgets I ordered were all broken, right? You don't want it so that the buyer is protected. Uh, tackling the business-to-business -business market, I want to jump back into you know, something that's a little bit strange, right? $20 trillion market in, in the U.S., $90 trillion, $100 trillion in B2B flows globally. Uh, and what are businesses doing to pay each other? Paper check. And this is an increase over the past three years. Paper checks have gained market share in the era of fintech, in the era of faster payments, payments initiative, blockchain, we are seeing real businesses, large corporates especially, increasing their payment flow by paper check. And it's not just a U.S. phenomenon. Right? Globally, I know here in the UAE and in the Middle East, checks are also a big problem. They are costly, but they are the way that business gets done. And it's the same around the world where there are $96 trillion in payments globally by paper check. So why are businesses resisting moving to electronic transaction, right? It has nothing to do with the speed, right? We know it's the surety, the security, the certainty of the payment that's important. So the transformation from an old paradigm that is trusted and used and known and secure is you know, hard to breach because going into a new paradigm involves change, change is bad, change is risky, change is expensive, right? I have to retrain my staff, I have to adopt new technology, I have to uh, put in new costs, and oh yeah, in most payments technologies, I'm also losing information from what I get today. So all of those things are bad. So with Snapcheck, and just to do a little plug for us, right, we believe that there is a way to bring the ubiquity of the check, the cost of ACH, of SEPA, of direct transfers, the speed of wires, the data richness of EDI that corporates cherish, and the security of blockchain together 
to give businesses a real way to make payments to each other that fits within their existing processes with zero training, zero uh, cost of IT upgrades, within their existing bookkeeping, reconciliation, uh, um, tax reporting processes, so that now businesses have a pragmatic, practical way of moving and gaining 70% of cost reduction and 90% fraud reduction without having to overhaul their entire back office process. And I challenge everyone here to start thinking in terms of consumer problems and business problems so that we can really address the needs of our customers, right? And we can solve the back office problems for banks and for ourselves as those come. But think about the end user problem first, and the world would be a better place. Thank you very much.